Sub dogs, it's ya boy, the Odie. But today, I am not just the Odie, the ya boy, for I am also the Odie, the your captain. Because you see, you and I are gonna go on a journey. We're gonna sail all the way up north in hopes of finding not just any iceberg, but the RPG Maker Iceberg. Yes, that is correct. We are doing an iceberg video. And if you do not know what the iceberg template is, then do not worry. It is an idea that I totally came up. Definitely does not already exist somewhere on the internet. There are certainly not hundreds and hundreds of videos that are out there. And the iceberg theory goes that while the iceberg is there floating in the sea, you're above water, you can see it but the what's underneath it and how big it extends and expands or how deep it goes, well, only those who are truly masters or those who have spent many, many hours into the art of the topic will know and truly appreciate. Well, here we are, except it's for RPG Maker. And I'm not talking about games, but instead I am talking from a developer's perspective. I spent more than 10 years with the RPG Maker line. I like to think that I spent enough time to know at least half of what I'm talking about. I will fairly warn you guys that I do concentrate on horror genre games, so don't expect to hear a lot about the turn-based combat or going off adventuring in the open world, but instead the more puzzle aspects and the mechanics to create those puzzles and sort of things I found that I both enjoyed and hated with RPG Maker. So with that said, let's sail off on what I shall call the SS Orb. Ah, look at us. Look as we set sail on the beautiful SS Orb in honor of the new game I am creating called Caster's Trap and an orb being a primary item of the game. <clears throat> Shameless plugin. So there we go. You got me as your captain and there are you two just chilling on this nice giant boat as we roll along towards the North Pole in hopes of spotting the RPG Maker Iceberg. And there we see it off in the distance. So with this iceberg video, we can kind of break down the iceberg into different sections or different chunks of it. Sim kind of similar to a tier list, except it's an iceberg. So here, as I shall call it, the tip of the iceberg. You see the words RPG Maker. You, you hear things having been created in RPG Maker. Games such as Eeb, Witch's House, Corpse Party, Omori, Lisa. You know, the sort of games that kind of made their way out there and were well known for their time periods and kind of still well known today. So it kind of give you an idea of what RPG Maker is capable of. And hey, you know what? We all heard of RPG Maker, the engine that does not require coding. Which, you know, is a little bit of my opinion, a little bit of a lie, but technically, no, you don't have to type any code whatsoever, but you do have to know syntax. But regardless, I'll get into that as we go on. So there we go. We're off. We're sailing along. We kind of know and understand what's going on here. Doo -doo 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 and as we row, the iceberg just gets bigger and bigger and just like that whoa it's a lot bigger than it seems this is the point where you're watching tons and tons of tutorial videos trying to understand what exactly do you gotta do you open up archie rpg maker and you're just like hmm well i could see that i can create stuff aka maps t with using tile sets and for the most part it's pretty simple and basic you don't really have to look up a video to learn that but there are some things that you will need to understand otherwise you're, there are small things with the maps that's going to kind of get to you kind of like when you're using set b and c and how they kind of overwrite each other but you don't exactly know the pattern for it because in your mind you should just think hey there should be a layer a a layer b a layer c and a layer d right but it doesn't exactly work that way it is also at this point where you learn the two most basic things, variables and switches. 
Fairy bows will probably take you a solid minute to really get the hang of, but switches, those should be as simple as, well, a light switch, on and off, right? <laughs> Fairy bows contain numbers, so there's a little bit more to it. But once you master switches and variables and as well as conditional branches, then you kind of got RPG Maker down for the most part. That's kind of your ever so basics to creating pretty much anything and everything. Variables, you can create a code for a door. Switches, you can create a key and a lock. And for the most part, that's pretty much where you are at this chunk of the iceberg. But we're, there we are, also getting closer. And the iceberg also gets bigger. There we have it. We see the iceberg in its entirety. Now, there's a lot that goes on in this phase once we've seen the iceberg and what it presents to us, aka those of you who took the time to look into the database, took the time to watch many tutorials, and took the time to try several things in RPG Maker. These are the points where you start to really understand the different event processing, such as the difference between auto run and parallel processing. Uh, you also start to learn about common events and how they can be very, very useful and at the same time a little bit confusing. Some of you guys may have run into a little bit of trouble, primarily with the priority settings such as above, below, or same as, and how that can kind of get to you where if you have it set to above or below and you're facing it but you're not in the event and then you can't interact with it you have to be in the same tile space to interact with that and really it's more so the fact that you haven't spent enough time with rpg maker just yet every engine has their own nuance and this is kind of rpg makers nuance and they kind of all seem like a hindrance at first but once you really understand why they work the way that they work then you can really utilize it for you as you create your game a simple example is again with the priority say you have an item that's on the ground but you don't want to just walk in front of it to interact you want to walk on top of it to interact and that can be very useful when you have a bunch of items on the ground that the player has to pick up and collect so that's kind of the idea there now also in this area this is when you start to learn about the different sort of resources you can bring into rpg maker you'll learn about how to create a character set and that there are a lot that's already out there and available but you'll also kind of learn that there's a thing known as copyright in commercial use or non-commercial use and that's something you really want to get used to so it's also at this point where a lot of people who are new to rpg maker will think that they've seen all that rpg maker has had to offer so they'll be rowing and rowing thinking that ah, i don't need to see the rest of this engine i've seen as much as it can offer and just like that out comes the devourer of those who are too impatient and just like that the ship aka your ship i'm not on that ship it's someone else's ship there they go spinning around crazily 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 ah! they got devoured and boom just like that they sink and then they die as the devourer of the impatient swims away happily readily and waiting for the next group who are also impatient to get in <sighs> but luckily for you guys your boy your captain the od is here on the ss orb with you guys and we have made it to the base <laughs> to the RPG Maker Iceberg. <sighs> and so we shall continue onward. And what is there more to offer? Well, that is where we see that the iceberg actually has more to offer. 
So here we are on the SS Orb. I'm um, guys, yep. Just look down in that sea and see what it has to offer. And then of course, one of you guys who's just too dang eager is like, <gasps> up here? No, I'm gonna go down there. And of course, I'm like, no, don't go down there yet. You have still a lot to master up top. Go to the top. And of course, this person who read the comments in the YouTube section is like, oh, they're so right. I too want to see it from down there. And then they also go upside down. And they slowly slowly sink with them and me your boy your captain the Odi, who knows better but also knows that if you can't beat them you just join them so and because i'm so skilled and knowledge knowledgeable in this rpg maker iceberg i'm able to do all these crazy cool tricks do a, as a matter of fact, I even do a couple of different flips. And into the sea I go as well. But because I am more skilled than you guys, I am able to sink fast enough to get down to your level. And while we're sinking, I tell you guys, well, now that we're in the first layer under the iceberg, let's talk about the sort of things you can find here. And of course, because we didn't lay anchor to the boat, it is off drifting away. But that's fine, because you got me. So everything's all good. <laughs> so the first layer under the sea of the RPG Maker Iceberg. So honestly, you should not be at this point until you publish one or two short RPG Maker games, or at the very least, spend roughly half a year to a full year in an RPG Maker, just learning the basic, truly understanding the conditional branches, the parallel processing, the common events, and how to really utilize and efficiently take advantage of all the sort of different properties that it has to offer. Because once you hit this layer, then you guys are ready to use plugins and I'm not talking about down here I'm talking about pretty close up here really studying what they are trying to understand it and how they you can benefit from using it it is also at this point where you're really starting to use more of outside resources for your game as opposed to just what's out there that you can buy because by now, you should realize, or at least kind of understand, that if you're trying to have a bigger audience for your game outside of the RPG Maker community, then yes, your own custom art, your own custom music, all of that is extremely important. I know it's going to break several of your hearts, because a lot of us, me included, are great coders or developers but we ain't all that great at art nor are we all that great at creating music then of course there's that one person who can do all three and whatever <laughs> but whatever i'm not jealous <sighs> not jealous at all so i do want to touch upon that for just a quick minute because i do see at least in a lot of um reddit posts as created by new users that they're saying you know what, I can't do art, I can't create music, but I swear to God, I have a really great story. I, it's so good. Shouldn't that be the main thing for a game? The story, the adventure, the gameplay, not the art or the music. And I, I hate to break it to you, but you gotta be honest with yourself. Go onto Steam, type in RPG Maker in the games or whatever that will bring out tags for RPG Maker games. And scroll through, look at it, See how many of them use default assets or assets that you've seen that were purchased? And ask yourself, how convinced are you to click on that game to learn more about it? And then when you click it and you look through the screenshots and you watch the trailer, do you feel more convinced? Are you going to make that purchase? 
The main problem is that you have seen it before and you've heard it before. The story and characters may be different, but for the most part, it doesn't feel 100% new because we've all seen it many, many times. Be completely honest with yourself. How many RPG Maker games that uses the default RTP resources have you purchased? If others aren't convincing you, why do you think you can convince others when you're all using the same tactics? The story and gameplay is great. Just ignore the stuff you see in here. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to the engine itself because that's the primary iceberg that we have in front of us. So, at this level, you really understand the basics. You're really starting to understand the different plugins that exist and how to really utilize your game. But it's not until the next level, or as a matter of fact, it's kind of a transitional period between this section and the section below it, which is quite the deep section, might I add. It is those sections where you start to truly truly see what the engine is capable of. Maybe you took the time to learn a bit of JavaScript or you kind of self-taught it yourself because you can, you now know that you can take a plugin that's already existing and make changes and edits to it so that it works for your games more appropriately. Not all publishers of plugins will allow you to do this. Visual Stella is quite the infamous one for one that you can't change the code of. If you ever tried opening one of their codes, then you'll come to see that it's all encrypted. And you know, they do it for good reason. They are a group of developers who all work together to create the beautiful massive library that we have in front of us. And they do an exceptional job just creating all the customization in the plugin parameters so that we never have to go into the code itself to make changes. And for that, I do appreciate and understand, you know, it's very easy to steal someone's code. All you gotta do is open it, control copy, control paste, say, hey, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. And then with code, because it's all syntax and algorithms, well, a lot of it looks the same. Anyway, that aside, it is also at this era in this level that if perhaps it's not JavaScript that you're all that interested in, then it's the event commands and there's sort of different things you can do with the event commands. So again, during that transitional period of up here to now this larger base, this is where you start to experiment with a different sort of uh, event commands and the sort of puzzles you can create with event commands. A very, very great example of one are picture puzzles event commands you know there's a lot of great things you can do with pictures just because it moves by pixel as opposed to moving by tiles tiles will always move by the size of your tile and in mz's case it's 48 by 48 and you're kind of stuck to those blocks but with pictures you can move and nudge it one pixel at a time and really get that preci precision that you want or need. So that's kind of where that transitional period is. And as you dive deeper and deeper into dif these different sort of experimentations, then you'll be blown away with what sort of things you can do with just event commands, plugins, and a little bit of JavaScript code here and there. And I did exactly that when I recreated Phasmophobia in RPG Maker. I was actually quite mind blown with the sort of things that I could do in that. That was my first time really breaking the mode and experimenting with what I'm capable of. I think it turned out very, very well. And if you guys want to give it a shot, feel free to go ahead and download it. So if not earlier, then it is definitely at this point where you just stop watching tutorials altogether. You kind of know how to create pretty much anything you could think of, and it truly does become your limits are your imagination. In one of my earlier devlogs for Cash This Trap, I was creating a quick time event with a bar that grows and then you gotta click it within a section of the bar. I honestly thought it would take me a couple of days to figure out. I'm not saying this to gloat, I'm just saying that once you reach this point, and as for in perspective, I got it on the first try. <laughs> Meaning that rather than testing it as I developed it, I thought about it 
put in all the code and then tested it and then it all just kind of worked out the way I wanted it to and I was like whoa whoa <laughs> and hence the celebratory dance <laughs> so truthfully I would say that this is the part of the iceberg that I am still currently learning and tackling and investigating to see what I can do to push myself with RPG Maker now as for the rest of it aka the unknown there's a reason why it's cut off and it's because we honestly do not know how far it can go it could go all the way down to the earth's crust maybe through the earth out the other end it is the south pole <laughs> it actually expands even further and beyond and goes into space off to pluto that's not even a planet anymore and haven't been in over 10 years hasn't been in over 20 years maybe even so what is beyond the iceberg that we see in front of us well guys it is and all has to do with javascript as you know rpg maker uses javascript what you can do with javascript will determine what you can do with rpg maker if you got machine learning text to speech or speech to text auto generating maps if you can do any of those stuff then bam welcome to the new world of rpg maker i'm not there yet i have not seen that part of the iceberg but i do see folks online who have seen that part of the iceberg and of course it is the group that is visustella person who created mv3d the person who created the whole lighting system for rpg maker and it is just honestly marvelous to see all these sort of different things you really understand what javascript is capable of and you really understand how rpg maker works in terms of its engine so you just take the understanding of javascript convert it a little bit twist it here pull maybe twirl <laughs> i'm thinking of bop it right now <laughs> and then bop it into rpg maker <laughs> will i reach that part of the iceberg i'm not 100 sure on one hand i do want to but on the other hand i am like most of you guys are looking forward to rpg maker unite and the sort of things we can mess around in there if it so happens that they're also using javascript then maybe i will learn javascript so it can also um use it for any of the other engines future the Yodi has arrived back into the past to revisit this iceberg because he completely forgot to talk about something <laughs> and it was all of the things that i consider to be somewhat either annoyances or things you have yet to discover because they're not exactly things you look for they kind of just come up and they can be beneficial or they can be completely annoying <laughs> and the thing about this is that they kind of appear all over the iceberg some may notice that well they're still above the iceberg but it's not until they get below the water and into i would say this transitional area between the this section and then the primary bigger section that you begin to notice these things or begin to really investigate it for example if you ever made cutscenes that switches from one character set to another character set then you probably notice a flicker for like a frame or two and this is all because of the way rpg maker and how it loads its information it does not cache the images until it sees it for the first time so even though you stick into the folder you start up the game it hasn't been loaded yet so what you need is a preloader plugin to preload those images before they actually make their appearance and there's a bunch of preloader plugins that are out there there's visuselos it's embedded in their core engine and then if you don't like having visuselos core engine which honestly is a great plugin by the way there's a bunch of plugins that's just solely devised for preloading the images and i know for most of you guys who are kind of just new to game development in general finds that to be extremely annoying but you also have to think and consider that this is a very regular thing in game development and in 
video games in general. This is why we have loading screens, and why there are chunk that generates off in the distance for open worlds. So it's really not brand new to the engine, it's just that with RPG Maker, it's very very unlikely that you need a loading screen. And you don't really notice this as a RPG Maker developer. Back in my Let's Play days, there were some very, very nicely fine-tuned games that I played, but they had that flicker, and it's because while they may have been a great developer and have spent a lot of time in RPG Maker, they were never really curious to know why it flickered, or maybe they liked the flicker, <laughs> who knows? So really, it's up to you to catch these things, notice them, and ask yourself, is this normal? If it doesn't look normal, then Google it, because 9 out of 10 times, because of how big the community is for RN, it's been investigated before, and there's likely a solution to it now. Now, that was something I would consider to be completely annoying, but something that I would consider to be quite beneficial are parallel processes and the fact that it takes one frame to go through just one loop of the parallel process. So no matter how long it is, as long as there's no wait commands, no wait for completions or anything like that, then it will just take a single frame to get from top to bottom. And that is super, super useful when making internal timers or anything that's based on time. I actually discovered this by creating internal timers and I was using a wait command in a parallel process and I was like, alright, this is definitely one minute, why is this thing not working out? And then lo and behold, hey, well, parallel process takes one frame. By adding a wait, then you're adding more time and it would just screw over your your mechanic and it took me a while to figure that out because I had like this crazy engine built and you know what, you don't care. <laughs> so that's another thing. And then there's also the, you know what, let's say you have multiple parallel process in your game or maybe you have multiple auto runs in your game for whatever reason on a single map and you need to know whether event ID 1 will run before event ID 2 or perhaps it's whichever event is closest to the top left corner and RPG Maker moves right and then down. Which one is it? I actually investigated this way back when, but as it turns out, there's very, very little to no chance that I'll have two auto runs on a single map at the same time. So I completely forget what the answer is. But if you're curious, then go for it, investigate it, or Google it, and you'll find out. Because as I mentioned, the community is quite big, and this has been tested before. All right, so. There you guys have it. That is the RPG Maker Iceberg in a nutshell. Uh, I know there's still a lot of things I didn't talk about that I could have talked about, but also I didn't want this video to be longer than it is. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed. And if you did, hit the like button. If there's anything I did miss, then feel free to comment it down below so that for those who are interested in the RPG Maker engine, go ahead and read it and also understand at what section of the iceberg that you are talking about. Where does it lay? Where does it live? How far into the engine must they learn in order to get there? Also, where do you consider yourself to be in the iceberg? You know, are you where I'm at? Are you a little bit before that? Or maybe you reach the depths that I have yet to see. That'd be really cool. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, this is your captain, the Odie, and he's sinking. And sinking. And sinking. Sink with me. <laughs> it is also tends to be at this part of the iceberg where a lot of people who said they used RPG Maker for a long time have decided to leave RPG Maker because it's too limited. And they will often jump over to like Unity or Unreal and that's totally fine. You know, sometimes you just don't like how RPG Maker works. But at the same time, you have yet to see a lot more of the engine. So, for those folks, out comes yet again the devourer and he's going and he's going and he sees me and others like me it's like oh no 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 this guy i respect you as a matter of fact i bow to you 
couple of times, and I shall continue onward. Pshhh. He goes in a higher angle. Whoosh. And then, like a missile. And then they get devoured. And off to sea. And there I am. Sinking, sinking. All by myself. But it's cool. It's cool. I'm loving the engine. It's doing great stuff. Uh, here I am all by myself. Uh, it's cold down here. But that's fine. Because I'm getting smarter. What? <laughs>